Hello, Ian here from Dark Bleeds Workshop. Welcome back to another video. Um, and this one we're painting Sirius Black. And so to finish off, I used the, the Fenris Grey with, with black added to it. And I did the, the inside of the coat between the legs as well. Um, so I'm fairly happy with that. Next up is going to be the um, the board. Okay, so I'm going to add the the white panels where the the lettering goes in these little windows. Um, just using watered down ivory. probably take a couple of coats so I'll just wait for that to dry I'll do a thin shadow layer. I've added a little bit of black to the Fenris grey mix. And I'm just going into the shadow areas or the, the folds of the cloth. Just water on my brush now and just feathering it off at the end there just to blend it in a bit and we'll carry on. Just went over with the brush onto the highlighting area so I just wet my finger so I'll bring that, that uh, lighter tone back at the top of the crease and I'll do the inside of the coat as well Going straight onto a second coat now because it's dry. Fill that bit in the middle.
So I've got the original base tone now, it's just a pure Fenris grey. I'm just going to bring that colour back again um, from, any, from any area that I made a mistake or where I went into the shadow by mistake. Let's bring each crease back. Once we've got these creases back, we can start highlighting them. It's only the odd one that needs it, it's not every... Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of ivory to the Fenris Grey and I'm going to thin it down to pretty much a wash or a nearly a glaze consistency in between a wash and a glaze so it's about one drop of paint um, about two and a bit drops of water. Um, I'm just picking out each fold. I'm not too concerned about it down the bottom because I'll be going in with uh, a dusty looking pigment after this. It doesn't have to be perfect. So hopefully the pigment will mask any mistakes that we make. So I'll just feather that at the edge there. So I'll push the pigment back towards the middle of the stroke. So I'll just do the arms as well. So I'm just picking out the top of each fold. If you notice I'm pulling the pigment up towards the highlight area which is the top of the shoulder and I'll just feather that bit off so it blends it in. So I've got a bit more ivory in it now so it's it's getting towards a um, a light grey colour now. And Still nice and thin.
to stay within the areas that we put the previous highlight down. I'll do this for another pass as well because the paint is thin it's, it's quite a subtle layer so I'll do another layer just to build it up so I'll leave that dry first so I'm going to do a second pass but I'm just staying up at the shoulders now for this one just to get a highlight up there so I pull the pigment up over the shoulder, up, and up onto the, the flat bit at the top. And if you think you've gone with too much paint there, just wet your brush and feather it and push the pigment up again. So you should get a nice blend there then. The board I'm going to do with a, a darker version of this, so it's Fenris Grey again, but a lot more black in with it. So it's about 50-50 Fenris Grey and black. And again, it's quite thin. because I don't want to get any on the white that we've put down already. I'm being quite careful. I'm going to leave that dry there before I try and do the stripes <laughs> uh, that separate the, the letters and numbers. And I use the same colour for the shoes as well. It's almost dry actually. Okay, so this is the careful stage is to get the the lines in between the numbers and the letters. And just refocus that. So I'm swapping brushes. Don't try and do the whole line in one. You can see I'm doing this half and then I'll flip it over. And go from the top down. Hopefully you meet in the middle somewhere.
Just trying to get into that. A little bit there. Okay, I'll leave it there for now. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the lettering on camera, but it's the same principle as doing the stripes earlier. Add a little bit of flow improver to your black and just take your time and do it very slowly. So I need to check the box out for the numbers now, but uh, I shall do that off camera. Alright, so we got the lettering in. Um, it looks dusty on the picture that I found online, so I'm just going to dry brush it with a grey. To try and get dusty appearance. Um, I'm using the slanash grey that we used for the trousers earlier. So I'll just get a little bit more on my brush now. Okay, we're getting there. I was going to try stippling on some slanesh grey now. So I've got straight out of the pot. Uh, I'm just using the absolute tip of my brush just to get the odd dot and scratch. Here and there. Just to give it a bit of character. Right, so we'll highlight the hair next. So onto the hair now, and I had some German grey on my palette still, so I've added a little bit of ivory to it just to lighten it up and I'll just put pick out strands of hair. And just work my way around the model now, just picking them out. Particularly if you can see them from looking from above, if you can see where they are, that's where we want the highlights to go. So if they're folded under, like that little bit there, I'm not going to highlight it, so it'll just be the top bit of it. And then that bit there. And uh, it's just a case of building up the highlights then. They start to go lighter. I'll add a little bit more ivory to it.
So another highlight now, so we're almost at a light grey stage. And I'll pull the, uh, pull the colour towards the part in. I think that's where it's going to be the lightest. And just pick out the odd curl then. Where you think the light would hit. Don't forget the moustache, as I keep doing. And if you think you've gone too heavy in some places, you can always go back with a, a black wash and try and get it into the recesses then. So I think I'll go one shade lighter. A tiny bit more ivory in there. thin black and I'm just going to put it into that part in there and try and separate some strands it looked a bit too grey up the top just to break it up a bit and I'll push the shadows here Apart from that, happy. Um, so I'll move on to pigments next. Just going to try a couple of these um, pigments out just because they're a nice dusty colour. And um, I like this one because it's got like a tinge of green in it. So I've added it to my pigment box and I'm just going to use it from there to apply to the figure with a half decent sized brush. So I'll start off with the, the one with the green tinge in it. I've got quite a bit on my brush so I'll get rid of the excess. And I'm going to do this one to the stripey, stripey clothes and see if we can get a nice dusty effect going. I need a bit more, I think. Yeah, it's starting to come. <laughs> Got some on the trousers as well. Just adds that little bit extra to it. Because he does look really dusty in the picture. So. I didn't want to do a wash with the pigments because 
and it would give a slightly different effect and I think just using the natural dusty nature of this pigment would be better than doing a wash with it so yeah it's starting to come there now so we'll leave that there and we'll use the light grey one for the coat now I just want to concentrate it down the bottom I'm not going to go up at the shoulders or anything Getting slightly obsessed with pigments lately. They do, uh, they do give something extra. You can always use a, a brown one as well if you wanted to, uh, down the bottom of the coat. Let's give it an extra little something something let's get rid of the excess on the trousers there Going in slightly heavier, you probably notice now. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I think we're finished. It's time to take some nice pictures. Let's get a bit of dust on there as well. Time to take some nice pictures and uh, do a wrap up. I'm not going to bother with um, any fixer because I doubt he'll ever see the board for a game. So the chances are that I'll only pick him up now and again to take photos and things like that. So there's, there's no need to fix the pigment on. If I was going to play, um, I would probably give it a, a sealant, um, like a, a matte varnish or something over the top, but I'll leave it as is. And if over time the pigments come off, I'll just reapply them again. Okay, here we are, finished on his base, another one off the list. I'm really glad I went for the, the alternative colour scheme on this one. I think it turned out quite nicely. I um, hope you think so too. Uh, let me know how you get on if you follow the process. Um, as always, any questions, get in touch in the comments below. I'll try and get in touch with you as soon as I can. But um, 
I think that's it for me for now, so we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>